thank you everyone, welcome. And hopefully this first progress webinar about our Net Zero DRI infrastructure project is um, going to be useful to you. So um, we're planning on doing these webinars kind of roughly monthly to keep everyone in the community updated about um, how we're getting on. So just a little bit of housekeeping to start off with. So you're all doing great and staying muted, so thank you very much. Um, I think we're all quite used to Zoom. Uh, feel free to have your videos on and at the end we'll do questions. So you can either use the raise hand function and unmute yourself and ask a question, or we'll be using Slido. So you can join at this um, link here and I'll also share a link to it um, when I finish talking in the chat so you can access it directly. Um, so yeah, as Charlotte mentioned, this has been recorded and we're going to share it on our website. So if you don't want to be um, recorded, then please stay muted and keep your video um, off. Uh, I don't think we'll add to the question section to the website, so it will just be the slides that we add to the website. So don't worry about the end of it. If, it, if I forget to stop the recording, then that won't be shared anywhere. Um, okay, I think that's probably enough housekeeping. So just a quick reminder, if you don't know who we are, we are a team at CEDA, which stands for the Centre for Environmental Data Analysis. I'm Poppy and I'm the Communications Manager. And the spaces on the screen, I think we're all here maybe apart from AG today. Um, so if you've got any questions for us, then we're the core team. And yeah, as I said at the bottom, if, if you haven't already introduced yourself and please do so in the chat, it'll be nice to know who's here and what you're interested in, that would be great. But these are kind of the faces behind the project. So today we are just gonna give you a bit of a rough overview about the project, a bit of a refresher if you're not sure what we're doing and what the scope is. Um, and then we'll give you a bit of an update about what we've done so far and the various ways that you can get involved over the coming weeks. And then we'll also talk about some upcoming events. Okay, so the project aims, um, these are our three core aims. So the Net Zero Digital Research Infrastructure Project in main aim is to collect evidence to inform um, investment decisions by UKRI. So we are collecting evidence to be able to provide the recommendations to UKRI and the wider community to create an outline roadmap so that we can achieve carbon neutrality um, in all of UKRI's digital research infrastructure by 2040 or sooner. Um, on the ne my next slide, I'll explain what, what we mean by digital research infrastructure as well, if you're not sure about that. And then the third aim is about enabling UKRI to play a positive and leading role in the transition to a sustainable economy. So just a little bit of a disclaimer at the bottom that it's important to remember that we are a UKRI funded project, but we do not speak on behalf of all of UKRI. Um, and our project will produce evidence and advice to feed into the wider decision making process. Okay, so a little bit more about the project scope. Um, we are focusing on digital research infrastructure or DRI, if you hear us say that acronym. Um, so these bullet points underneath kind of cover all of the main areas of what, what consists of DRI from a, from a UKRI perspective. So these are things like um, supercomputers, so things like Jasmine or data storage facilities, so long-term data archives, but it also includes things like software and sharing code or the people behind these facilities. So the experts who are running and maintaining these resources. Um, so for the infrastructure element, uh, in scope is everything that is UKRI owned or majority funded. So anything over, I think it's 50% um, is in scope for the project but we'll also consider the role of connected devices. So things like laptops and mobile phones owned by staff, um, because we need to include these for an indication of the direction and speed of the techn technological change needed. So hopefully that clarifies 
customize things a little bit if you're a bit unsure about what scape is there's a lot more information about the scape on the website and there's um, a really nice page on the UKRI website about what DRI is so um, we'll share these links at the end if you want to get any more information okay so I said that we're in the project going to be collecting evidence there's lots of different activities to do in our projects that will be doing this so um, this mind map kind of shows the main activities that we'll be covering. So we'll be doing detailed case studies, we'll be engaging with the wider community and stakeholders, we'll be doing an extensive literature survey, um, we'll be mapping the existing infrastructure that UKRI funds, and we'll also be assessing the funding framework. And then the two at the bottom, which are probably the ones which the community are most interested in, is the workshops and the proof of concept studies, as these are the ones which you can really get involved with. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. And again, there's a link at the bottom to a page on our website which gives more information about the activities that we will be um, collecting evidence from. So, what have we done so far? We've been really busy over the last three months and we've been doing lots of different things and making progress across all of the activity areas I've just mentioned. Um, today we're only going to focus on a couple of areas because we don't want to stomp you, stomp you too much and we're kind of focusing on the areas where we think we can ask for support and advice from the community or you who have turned up today. Um, so the three areas that we'll be looking at are to do with stakeholder engagement and community building, the literature survey and the sample event. So I'm going to talk to you about the community building and then I'm going to hand over to my colleague Charlotte, who is going to talk you through the literature survey and the sample event. OK, so community building, we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of months meeting lots of you. I recognise some names in the um, participant list, so thank you all. Um, here's a bit of an example of the different institutes and contacts we've made over the last few months. Um, so we've yeah, really just been trying to build the community around the project and getting the support and expertise that we need to make it a success. Um, the one thing that we found is that this stage of the project has taken up a lot more time and a lot more um, resource than we initially thought it would. So uh, we're trying to move away from having some of these one-to-one -one meetings and hosting these regular webinars instead to update the community about what we're doing. So another way that we're trying to build a community and a way that you can get involved is via the mailing list. I know some of you are already on that, so thank you for joining. Um, but I just wanted to give a bit of an explanation about how we're going to be sharing information to the communities on the mailing lists. So as I already said, it takes a lot of time for us to find the right people for who can get involved. So if you can help us or nominate people that you think should be um, engaging with us, then please do send to them this information for joining the mailing list. The one which some of you will already be on at the moment is the general mailing list. So this where will be where we send all of the updates out and it will be um, kind of more detailed, more detailed and more frequent information. And it's aimed at people who maybe want to help contribute evidence or expertise to the project and want to get involved by attending events and doing various things that we're putting together. So anyone can subscribe. You can click on this link on the website and subscribe. And you can also see an archive of all of the previous emails that we've sent if you haven't been on it already you can catch up um okay and then there's two more mailing lists which um are going to be kind of more manually set up so if you want to join either of these or nominate anyone to join these then please contact us with the details of who should be on which list so um the communications mailing list is aimed at colleagues who are managing maybe social media channels or websites or newsletters um, and those are the people who could share the project information to their wider communities. So um, I kind of anticipate that those emails will be like, hey, we've got these, these webinars coming up, please can you tell your communities what's going on? And then it will filter, filter through all of the communities. So if you've got any comms colleagues who should be on that list, then yes, please let me know. Um, and then 
secondly, the um, summary mailing list is aimed more at kind of upper management or stakeholders who might be impacted by the final findings or recommendations from the project. So this won't give all of the details about all of the events and all of the things that we've been doing throughout the project, but it will give the um, final findings and the summary. So less frequent and less detailed information will be sent to that mailing list. So again, if you think you should be added to the ESM, please let us know, that would be great. Okay, I think that covers everything for me from a community building perspective. So Charlotte, if I click onto your slides. Um, thanks very much. Um, so the literature survey has mostly been assembled uh, by the project team. Um, quite a lot of papers that Martin and myself have found. Um, so our view at the moment is um, quite partial because it's dependent on what we know and the things that we're finding, which is uh, why it'd be really useful for uh, you all to help us by telling us about uh, relevant pieces of literature. But so far we've looked at um, how we communicate to people what is the carbon footprint associated with their use of um, digital facilities. So that's, we, we know something about how much energy is used um, but how we communicate that to users is quite um, challenging because there's different ways of doing it and they all seem to be quite equally valid. Um, and with that regard, uh, we're finding it's important to keep uh, focused on uh, what is the scope of this project <laughs> and when trying to come up with um, useful metrics. But if anyone has any advice on that, very gratefully received. Um, we need to consider um, how you know, recommendations for procurement um, to take into account things to do with how we procure our energy in terms of the carbon footprint of the power supply, um, the carbon footprint of the manufacture of digital research infrastructure products, and also um, associated with the delivery of those equipments as well. Uh, I think delivery is quite a challenging one because currently shipping uh, isn't able to be done in a uh, way that doesn't release uh, carbon emissions at the moment. So um, the delivery of project products is something that we would have to um, do some kind of carbon capture in order to net zero those. Um, activities. Um, power storage is another one. So um, a lot of data centers have um, backup storage, backup power that they use. Currently there's um, generators that are diesel generators if power goes down. So there's ways of maybe uh, uh, looking at fuel cells and batteries so that we can um, manage uh, uh, our use of energy um, and also to support uh, renewable power sources. And then the uh, efficiency of how we use digital research infrastructures. So this is not just about the way, well, there's the code we run. Um, if our code is inefficient, then it's gonna use more energy than it needs to. So there should be ways of assessing that, um, but also um, how, um, how much your infrastructure is used, what's the constancy of the use of your digital research infrastructure. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so we have uh, a web form uh, that we'd love you to contribute uh, your um, information to. Oh, there's a comment here as well. Someone said, it's not only manufacturing delivery, uh, also end of life, I agree. Um, I was considering um, procurement in that context, but um, um, thanks very much for that, Dave. We're also looking at um, end of life advice and extending the lifetime, you know, how we um, think about um, uh, 
extending the lifetime of the products in data centers and uh, uh, large infrastructures in terms of um, uh, you know, what happens at the end of a warranty and also um, decommissioning. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we've got a number of different categories that we've come up with that we are interested in knowing about in terms of literature. So that's um, effective computation, um, something about the plus side of digitally enabled research. So what are the benefits? Uh, there's this concept of um, uh, making sure that your energy that you use is proportionate to the usefulness of the research that you're doing. Um, net zero, what's holding us back? Um, the consolidation of services, that's about bringing things together into cloud services. Um, efficient management of data, training, obviously, and e-waste and the circular economy. Okay, next slide, please. So, oh, we're also running some sandpit events. <laughs> um, so um, we're hoping to run a couple of sandpit events. These are going to be used to uh, determine how we plan and allocate funds for some of the activities that the Net Zero project is going to do. So these uh, we're planning to fund about five proof of concept studies with about £100,000 per study. And we also want some evidence gathering workshops as well. We're planning to run about eight of these with about 20 to 30,000 pound budget for each one. Um, so planning to run two sand pit events in May. I have the next slide, please. Um, so our proposed dates um, are, well, I'll come to that on the next slide, but the week commencing the 9th of May and the week commencing the 23rd of May. Um, and we plan to have the two different sandpit events on different themes because the project is quite broad. So um, the first is to do with the technical and operational challenges. Um, so procurement, um, how we design the architecture of our infrastructures um, to do with cloud platforms um, and consolidation, um, management of power, um, end of life and carbon capture and offsetting. And then theme two is about community and organizational challenges. It's clear that um, there is a push from the community who want us to get to net zero sooner rather than later. Um, but the outcomes of this project will affect the community. So we need uh, to engage with them um, in terms of user phasing services, um, data management, how behavior changes, um, training, the proportionality of energy use, um, who are the winners and losers? So if a recommendation is that data centers be all moved to Scotland where um, there's a lot of renewable energy and the cooling requirements are less and that's people moving, uh, but maybe there are other things to do with uh, what it means in terms of, um, uh, yeah, who, who benefits and, and to make some of that uh, benefits of moving to net zero fair. Um, and also how we can use monitoring to drive change. Okay, so the sample events are both for the proof of concept studies and the workshops. So this is something we wanted to be clear that uh, these uh, sample events uh, will be uh, looking at both of those. So next slide. Okay, so the time commitment, uh, we'll be running them on a Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday mornings between 10 a.m. and about 1 p.m. Uh, in the week commencing the 9th and the week commencing the 23rd of May. Uh, we will be setting up registration soon, um, but to come to these events, We'd like you to submit a short abstract of an idea and, and these will be reviewed and we'll invite people to the events. Um, and at the sandpit there'll be interactive group discussions about the different ideas, um, forming teams to revise ideas 
and uh, then at the end of the sound pit, uh, the teams will be invited to submit a one page proposal and then those proposals will be assessed by a peer review panel. Sorry, a review panel, yes. Okay, so the workshops, um, planning to run eight. Uh, they're intended to broaden the discussion to gather evidence from a wide range of sources. We want to outsource these so that uh, people who have access to relevant networks should be running them and who have expertise as well in the relevant areas. Um, there's a list on our website about the areas that we expect the workshops to cover, but these are not fixed and we expect there to be some um, work within the sand pits to determine more specifically uh, the things that we will cover in the workshops. But nevertheless, we expect them to address questions such as what scale of carbon reductions do we expect to be possible um, in the near and extended futures? Um, and where will these carbon savings come from? Uh, to think about the financial costs or benefits um, and also other costs in terms of time or benefits in terms of saving time or other um, non-monetary savings. And then also it's a roadmap, uh, not a route plan. So there are decisions that need to be made along the way. Thanks, next slide. Okay, so the proof of concept studies, we're expecting to fund about five of these. And these are about uh, detailed studies of specific technical solutions. And they're about showcasing ongoing activity. The short time scale of the project means that really it's existing activities that we'll be expecting to uh, look at in these proof of concept studies. Um, we expect these to be about uh, the efficiency of uh, UKRI, uh, digital research infrastructures, but it doesn't have to be a UKRI owned uh, digital research infrastructure that these studies are related to, um, so long as there's a clear relevance, then that would be fine. Um, potential concepts are things like how we use heat. We spend a lot of effort cooling our data centers, so maybe there's a way of better using that heat. Um, IT training, um, extending the life of hardware. Um, come and have a look at our website. And uh, if, if you've got ideas about this, then uh, please um, uh, look out for our announcements for registering for these uh, Sand pit events. Uh, next slide, please. Charlotte, I think I'm taking over from you now. <laughs> so um, just as a bit of a recap back from the beginning. Um, so we've talked to you about the activities on the right hand side that we've already started, but just as a reminder that there's a lot of activities in the projects that we're doing that will gather the evidence to provide recommendations for the roadmap. So hopefully, hopefully you've got a bit of a clearer idea about what we're doing about um, engaging with stakeholders, the literature survey, the proof of concept studies and the workshops. Okay, so some final comments. Um, as we flagged up a lot throughout this talk, um, our website is the place to go for the most up-to-date information. So please have a look if you haven't already. Um, please encourage your colleagues to sign up to the mailing list or attend these webinars if you think that they should be engaging with us, that'd be really great. Um, please do contribute to the literature survey and the related activity forms. Again, these are all linked on the website. If you're not sure where they are, then I can send a link in the chat in a minute. Um, and yeah, get thinking about your ideas of um, what to bring to the sound pit events and start writing your abstracts because they will, um, the registration will be announced fairly soon. Um, and then the next uh, regular webinars of this will be um, at the moment scheduled for the 12th of April and the 26th of May, but again we'll update the website if any of that changes nearer to the time. Okay, so that's it from us presenting. Um, if you've got